This is the Kratom Science Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gallagher, blog and social media writer for KratomScience.com, your source for all things Kratom. My guest is Justin Sykes. He goes by Turtle Todd on Twitter. A few years ago, he discovered Kratom, and it got him out of an opiate addiction. He grows Kratom trees in his home in Ohio. We're going to talk to him about growing Kratom as a hobby, which anyone could do. Where are you from, and where do you live now? Um, I'm from Ohio. I'm still here in Ohio. Northern part. Okay. And uh, so what do you do for work? I actually work in the steel industry. I'm a salt processor. for. Uh, we're uh, basically like a distributor for steel. That's so cool. We, Yeah, we supply all of Ohio with, you know, certain customers with whatever steel they want. Oh, that's cool. It's yeah. We're in Pittsburgh, so it's good to know there's still a steel industry around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's the name uh, Turtle Thought all about? Oh, uh, that's just uh, a name that my dad has and... We just it just kind of stuck with us. <laughs> just cool. a joke, really. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with aquascaping? Uh, no, not really. Actually, we were turtle hookers back when I was young. We would uh, turtle hook the Sandusky River, catch them, and you know, fillet them and, and eat them. They're actually really good. Seven different flavors of meat, actually, in a turtle. So that's kind of where that name came from. Oh, uh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. What kind of turtle? Is it like snapping turtles that have the meat on them? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, cool. snapper turtles. Yeah, they'll bite your hand off, man. They yeah. ain't no joke, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I've had I've had turtle soup a couple times before. It was good. Oh yeah, it's real good. Yeah. And uh, so, how how long you've been uh, aquascaping? Oh man, for probably twenty years. Oh, that's I've been awesome. Fish tanks. Yeah, just a good little hobby of mine. How many how many tanks do you have? I just have one at the moment, just a 75-gallon oh, okay. cichlid tank. Yeah. That's pretty cool. My, my friend does that. He has, like, a bunch of tanks in his little basement, but he has all kinds of shit in there. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Heck yeah, yeah man. So when did you first hear about Kratom? Um, actually, I was a bad opiate addict for years, probably 20 years, man. Yeah. And uh, went to rehab several times, got out, you know, was doing good. And then kept going back to the Suboxone, and uh, I was actually trying to detox off Suboxone, and I was on Reddit and came across Kratom, and it got my attention. I did a little research and, uh, you know, called a trusted vendor, you know, pure with Pure Leaf Kratom, yeah. and dove in, man, and it's been working miracles ever since. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when, when was, I'm sorry, when was that? Did, did you start uh, I, using it? It was probably about three years ago. I started, you know, gave it a try and just, yeah, yeah about three years. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. It works for you. Um, yeah. yeah. What, uh, do you just make the tea from your fresh leaves from your tree? Um, sometimes, yeah, but I still, you know, buy the powder. The trees really, you know, I don't have huge 50 foot trees in my house. So, you know, I still have to buy the powder, but I usually just mix it in with the orange juice. You know, it seems to take the taste away and, my wife drinks it with coffee, though, so I can't really stomach that, but orange juice seems to work good for me. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. But when when you do the fresh leaves, do you just, like, do you dry them first and make the tea? Or? Yeah. Yeah, you want to dry them up and then um, use the uh, flour mill is what they're called. You can get them off Amazon, and it actually grinds them up into fine powder, you know, just like the yeah. powder you buy from. Yeah, so that yeah, works pretty good. Does is there any difference in taste from the powder you get you buy online to that to your fresh? Um, ones? not not necessarily. I mean, it just you know like uh, sometimes you know to keep the bugs off, I I spray them with neem oil, spray the plants off with neem oil, so you know <clears> it kind of gives it a little more bitter taste. But you know, as far as it goes, it's pretty much the same, I think. So it's got a more long? got a more leafy taste, you know, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. It's probably less. Uh, yeah. It's probably probably been drying less or something like that. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long you been growing it? Um, actually, I started growing it last year around April. 
I just did some research on it. I was worried about a band, so I, you know, gave it a try. And, yeah. You know, found, found out it was pretty easy to do, really. And do you do them indoors? Uh, yeah. Well, in the wintertime, you know, it gets really cold up yeah. here. So in the winter, I, I bring them in the house and, you know, put them under a light and whatever. But in the summer and spring, you know, when it hits about 70 degrees, you can put them outside and leave them outside and they're good to go. Oh, that's cool. It's 70 yeah. like in the day or it doesn't have to be 70 at night? Um, No, no. Actually, you want to keep them at least above, I think, 50 degrees. If you keep yeah. them above 50 degrees, you know, they won't. You know, they'll be fine, but it just seems, you know, 70 or above is when the growth rate really seems to take off pretty well. So, you know, even even in the spring and summer, I'll put them outside even at nighttime and they're they're fine. You know, they're good to go. Oh, that's cool. And do you, yeah. have, do you have them like in big pots? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, as they get bigger, you want to, you know, actually you want to make the pot a little bigger. You know, obviously, like right now, I have them in seven-gallon grow bags. So yeah. I found the grow bags seem to work the best because it gives oxygen to the roots and whatnot. So, okay. Yeah. And, and how tall are they about? Um, Right now, I would say the ones I, I have babies, you know, that are probably three foot tall. And then I have, you know, the mothers are probably six foot tall, I'd say, roughly around that. And and how how many do you have? Um, Actually, I had eight. <laughs> And I got rid of a few of them. Now I'm down to five of them. So. Okay. And yeah. what is there? Is there a certain variety of tree they are of kratom tree they are? Or is it just kratom? Well, I know there's um, different varieties. There's, there's a there's a lot of misconception about you know like if you go on a vendor they have all these crazy different names. Yeah. And uh, basically, the only ones that there really is is from the regions they're from: Thailand, Indonesia. Malaysia, and uh, I forget the other one actually right now, but there's really only Borneo, four different types. Yeah, they're from the certain region, you know, and that's basically all there is. And I have all four of them. Okay. Oh, Vietnam. Vietnam's the other one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they legal? Is it legal in Vietnam? I don't even know. I'm not too sure. I do know that Thailand just uh, lifted their ban. Yeah. They had, a, they, yeah, they had a ban from way back in like the 40s, you know, when the opiate trade was going down mm -hmm. and they seen Kratom as a threat. Kind of like what's going on here in the States, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you, get, do you get them, you start them from seedlings or do you buy seeds, like start um, from I seeds? I actually ordered some, well, the, when I first started, I got clones from a guy over in Arizona. He shipped me clones. And then, because uh, I heard, you know, the seedlings are really hard to grow because after they, you know, fall from the tree, you only have a few days to germinate them before the seed goes bad. But I had a guy ship me hundreds of them, the little seedlings. And, you know, I did it right, put them in a little grow dome and all that and gave it a heat, heat mat and all that stuff. And I've actually only had a couple seeds pop. So they are extremely hard to grow from seed. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, so you get you so you get the the actual started plant. Yeah, yeah. He'll ship me clones. You know, they're about a foot tall. Yeah, just seems easier to do that way. Um, how long how long does it take them? Um, I guess well, you get the uh, the uh, already started trees. How long does it take for them to mature to where you can use the leaves? Now, I've heard different things. I've heard people say that it takes up to a year or two years before the potency starts to, you know, really flourish. But yeah. I found out that it just all depends on the growth. You know, it depends on how, you know, good your trees are. If you take care of them, you water them, you give them the fertilizers they need, you can basically start start eating them right away, man. It's just all on, all on how well they're doing, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, and but what, there's a lot of controversy on that. Everybody has their own opinion on it. Really, we're all still kind of learning about them. So, yeah, really. Um, and yeah. what? Uh, how do you know when the leaves are ready to go? Um, basically, dude, I just go by the size. Yeah, you know, you obviously don't want to 
pluck really small, tiny leaves because you probably won't really get too much of an effect. But you know, the the leaves that they're that are the size of your hand, you know, you know they're good to go. Mm. They're ready. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And do you use any? I mean, is this what kind of soil do they like? Do you use any type of uh, add any you know acid level or uh, no actually, fertilizer man, I, or anything? I, yeah, I throw them straight into Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil. Okay. Um, it just has tons of nutrients. It's really, you know, helps with the water drainage and all that. But I mean, you, you know, once the fertilizers run out in the soil, you obviously want to start adding fertilizer to it to, you know, give them that optimal growth. But Fox Farm seems to work the best for me. Yeah. Is that like an organic yeah. fertilizer? Yes. Okay. Yes. Real good stuff. That's cool. Um, and you said like one of the pests are spider mites and what did you say you, um, have spray spraying with some kind of oil? Um, neem oil. It's uh, all natural. Yeah. It's an all natural oil from a tree, I guess. And uh, I use, you know, everything organic. I don't spray pesticides and stuff on it. I just use straight neem oil. It seems to work, but the spider mites are, you know, they're pretty rough to get rid of. Them and things are ruthless. Yeah, this little... and they will just des- they'll destroy a tree, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I yeah. used to I used to um, be an organic farmer with my ex wife for about seven years, and we had oh, all yeah? the last... mites were the worst. The little things that like oh, eat yeah. the damn plant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that they'll sucked. destroy them. Especially if you're organic yeah. and you're trying to you know do that. <laughs> it's right. Like oh yeah, right. now I know why chemical fertilizer or chemical <laughs> spray was invented. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are there any other pests or fungus problems or anything? Um, I haven't had any fungus problems yet, but the only other pest I've had is, uh, I don't know, these little green bugs, thrips or whatever, or aphids, I think they're called. But yeah, if you, if you spray them down, you know, with whatever, you know, keep them outside in the rain and all the elements, they seem to, I don't know, it seems to work. It's just when you bring them in the house in the winter time, and if you have them in like a dusty area, then the spider mites will really get to them pretty bad. That's the only problem I've ran into with pests. Do they get enough light in the winter, or do you have to put like a fluorescent lights on them? Well, you can actually in the winter time you can cut them back, and you can set them by a window, you know, just the natural light, and they'll live. And you're not going to get optimal growth out of them. But if you, you know, like me personally, in the wintertime, I have them under grow lights just to kind of keep the growth rate up and, you know, but they'll, they'll survive if you just, you know, in the winter, if you just have them by a window doing nothing to them, they'll be fine. They're yeah. pretty resilient. Yeah. That's, it's interesting that you can actually, uh, you know, put them outside in, in like our climate yeah. up, up here. Yeah. Cause I've, I mean, the only other guy I talk to that grows them here is, uh, lives in Florida and I figure, well, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. He said he's just gonna plant it in his yard once it gets once it gets um, yeah. big enough. And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, I'm, that makes me wonder if we can have you know domestic kratom production like plantations down in Florida. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Florida and Hawaii, you know, the warmer climates, de- definitely. But I mean, I've heard that they'll die off in the winter time. You know, I haven't tried it yet. I was actually going to do it this coming year. I was going to plant a couple outside here in Ohio just to see if they, you know, survived the winter time. But, you know, I'm not really too sure. But absolutely, I mean, we could definitely have plantations down south. It yeah. would great. Yeah. I, like, I wonder if that would make it more expensive or cheaper because the labor would be more expensive, but then the shipping right. would be cheaper. Right. Yeah, I'm not really too sure on that. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool to do, though. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. How many tree? Like, how many tr- trees do you think you would need to supply one person for one year, based on just what you what you're doing? Um, man, I don't know. I would say if you had one twenty foot tree, yeah, you'd be good. I yeah. mean, that you'd be you'd be good to go. But as far as, you know, one six-foot tree, it's not going to work. You know, that's kind of why I still order it from Indonesia, too. Yeah. It's just more or less a little hobby. But, yeah. I mean, definitely, if you, had, if you had the means to grow it outside in Florida and you had, you know, 
one big tree, you'd, you'd be good for a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. I actually have to contact that guy because he was like, "Yeah, I'll send you pictures, put them up on the website, and stuff like that." So right. I was like, "Heck yeah!" I haven't that's heard from cool. him. I got to contact him again. That's pretty cool, right? But yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. trying it now because yeah, it's really easy to do, man. Like, yeah, super easy to grow. What's they're what's really this... resilient. Yeah, that's 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 also what he said. He said you just basically give them a lot of water, put them in the sun, and they're and they're yep. good to go. Tons of water. That's the key is just water, water, water. Um, so, so what's what's going on in Ohio? We had some uh, latest news that they uh, we we all we think something's we think it's fine in Ohio, and then it goes back to we're gonna ban it again. Did you hear about that? Man, I I ain't heard nothing about a ban. I mean, I know we've been fighting pretty hard for the last year or two over it. Um, I know last August we actually had a hearing with the board of pharmacy and I even went to it Yeah. and they were on the brink. Of, they were on the brink of banning it and it didn't, you know, they, they dropped it. But from what I know, I guess there's legislation in the process. A rep here in Ohio is trying to pass the Creative Consumer Protection Act. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're still kind of waiting on that. You know, I don't know if there's any more info that you could give me. I have, that's all I've heard really. Yes, I mean, as far as I know, the because uh, we were covering, I was covering the state um, laws pretty close. But as, as far as I know, now with the everything going on, everything's shut down, so everything's on hold. Yeah. But uh, right. So I have no idea what's if they're gonna get back to it or if they're gonna drop it. They're I, hopefully all this stuff will just keep them busy because they'll have a bunch of right. other stuff to do once they get in. You know, I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't think they're going to be able to ban it, really, dude. I I think there's way too much pushback. I mean, they're trying tooth and nail to do it, but I just think the pushback is so much. And then the new studies coming out. You know, I I personally don't think they will. Yeah, they're gonna have a hard time banning it. And it just seems like the attitudes in general now, like most people want marijuana legalized, and right. I, you know, I just think as long as people think it's not going to kill you. <laughs> you know they'll yeah. they'll let it. Uh, they'll be yeah. against the ban. Yeah, you know absolutely. government overreach. Excuse me. Yeah. Are there certain? Well, I mean, you don't grow it outside, so it's so it's not uh, necessarily a relevant question. But I was going to ask right. if there's certain times, like maybe during the stage of growth, when the leaves are stronger or weaker, and when you buy those plants, can you start using the leaves right away, or do you have to wait a while to, before you can use them? I mean, you could use them right away, but I mean, you want to, you want to let it grow. You want to let it, you know, do its thing before you start plucking them. I usually let them get pretty big and bushy Yeah. before I, yeah, before I start. But the main thing I have found to get the potency well is heat and just tons of water, man. Heat's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. What part, what part of you, are you, Sandusky, you said? Oh uh, yeah, around that area, yeah, up in northern part. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. So you guys probably yeah. get a lot of rain. We get a lot of rain too. So. Oh yeah. I think the water yeah, part probably. in the summer will not be. <laughs> the sun no. part in Pittsburgh, at least in Pittsburgh, might be a problem. But. <laughs> Plus the the humidity, the humidity up here is you know in the summer is is good for them. Yeah. It's it pretty hot and humid. Yeah, yeah. But the winter times suck. Yeah. Yeah, you just. When do you usually? What month do you usually bring them in? Just when it gets, um, starts getting cold know, at night. Kind of gauge it. Yeah, I'd yeah when it starts to get in the forties at night, it's usually when I'll bring them in. I'd say October. You know, you could probably stretch it out through September. You know, just depending on the year, really. Yeah. You just gotta gauge the temperature and check the weather status. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So when when you transition, uh, well, were you did you transition to Suboxone first before you went to Kratom? Yeah, yeah, I tried everything. I was actually on the subs for years, man. I I took subs probably for seven years, and I thought those were harder to get off of than the heroin, to be honest. Oh, really? And I yeah, and I just you know was trying everything known to man to try to get off them things, and here comes Kratom. Yeah. Ain't touched one since, man. That's good. Um, 
Did you, I mean, were you yeah. complete, did you get totally off the box and clean and then start using Kratom, or did you taper I, from one? And... I went, no, I went straight from the subs, went and bought some Kratom, and didn't look back, dude. I had no withdrawal symptoms. I I had nothing, you know, the Kratom completely took it all away to the point where, you know, after several months, I just completely forgot about the box and then I haven't touched one since. That's great. That is great. That's probably yeah. why the FDA is trying to outlaw it. <laughs> That's exactly why the FDA is trying to outlaw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me. I mean, I My always team. like to get information from somebody that, because I have people ask me, and you know, I'm, I've never, yeah. I've never been addicted to opiates, so I'm, it's hard to know what to say, and so I'm like, this is what yeah. this person did, and everything. So yeah. you, yeah. So you just never, never look back. Never looked back, dude. I haven't touched another substance since. It just totally saved my life. That's and great. I've did exper I've I've did experiments with Kratom because I you know I've heard there's terrible withdrawals and it's addictive and all this crap, dude. I've went days without it before, and the only withdrawal symptoms I've ever had was I felt real lethargic, and I yawned a lot, and you know I had a little bit of restless legs, and that was it. And it, it's bearable, you know. You can you can get through that. And then after a couple of days of that, man, it's it's really nothing. Like it's all just a mess. All this withdrawal crap, in my opinion, you know. Other people's different, but that's for me personally. Versus, I like, wasn't sick and puking and all that, you know. From yeah, crazy. that's what I was gonna ask. Versus, like an opiate withdrawal. Oh, dude, it's nothing. I would say it's like a tenth of an opiate withdrawal. Like it's it's nothing. And then, like, somebody who's, you know, been addicted to opiates for a long time, if you can withdraw from opiates and you're going to survive, Kratom's nothing. It's it's a total breeze. There's nothing to it, really, in my opinion, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's what we hear from most people. I mean, of course, yeah. they're going to highlight, you know, the one person that couldn't, you know, yeah. spend in five hundred dollars a day or whatever they say they always right. exaggerate it but i'm sure right. there are a few people out there like you know somebody might die of uh, yeah. tylenol toxicity if they take a couple right. of, too many of those but right now i have read you know people that has never really taken opiates that has just taken kratom and withdrawal i'm sure it's a little harsher for them because they're not used to the opiate withdrawal obviously Mm -hmm. So, you know, to them, it's probably a little worse, but, you know, in my opinion, it was really nothing for me to just stop taking it. Yeah. I'm just tired. You know, I just was pretty lethargic, but that was about it. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. I'm I'm glad I, I learned some stuff. I didn't really realize you could even grow them here and keep them outside. So we're thinking yeah. my wife already yeah. started her little garden. So I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, uh, I might, might order some trees there. Yeah, dude. Might as well, since really, I write about really it. Easy. Hell. <laughs> right. It's real easy to do, man. Don't believe, you know, like when I first was researching growing it, I read all these crazy stories, how you can't do it and blah, blah, blah. And I, even my own wife laughed at me when I told her I was going to give it a try. And I found out it's probably the easiest plant to grow. Yeah. To be honest. You want to care for them, you know, just the main key is just water. Yeah. Water's the key. Yep. When you have them indoors in those bags, do you, does the water seep out, or do you have them in? You put them in buckets when you bring them indoors. Um, no, I, you can go get these little trays. You know, at the garden store, and I just stick them underneath the bags. That way, the water just drains onto the trays, and then just dump the tray out. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah easy enough. I get <laughs> right. I'm just kind of like thinking, like, where am I going to put them in the house? Probably actually yeah. in this room where I'm sitting now. Right. Like, now, as far as water is concerned, though, I do not use tap water because all the chemicals and whatever in your tap water. All the um, cleaning, I actually chlorine use R and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually, I use RO water, which you can find them little stations at Drug Mart or Walmart and get a gallon for 30 cents. Okay. So I'll just refill all those. Yep. So you want to definitely use RO or distilled water for them. Yeah. It keeps the pH levels right. Well, yeah, thanks Thanks very much for talking to us. Well, thanks no to problem, Justin man. Sykes. He goes by Turtle Todd on Twitter. The music is by Arisey. The song is called Memories of Thailand. The Kratom Science Podcast is written and produced by me, Brian Gallagher, 
for KratomScience.com. Take care.